Hey everyone, we're on to lesson seven now. I'm gonna to try to wrap up this tutorial series in this lesson, but I think it's gonna spill over into an eighth lesson. But anyways, let's get started on fixing this code. In the last lesson, I taught you some stuff that's gonna help us do just that, fix our code. So I'm gonna copy these two lines of code from our previous lesson and paste them uh, just under here. So what these two lines of code we're doing, of course, is just uh, setting these symbols to two point values. So the first thing I'm going, to, I'm going to do with these two things is I'm going to add these, I'm going to declare these as local variables. I'm going to take out this little semicolon and make this, this line of code active again. The next thing I'm going to do is place these point values into our mView command. So instead of running the mView command and then having that command remain active, we're going to pass these variables to the mView command and just let, let the mView command run completely in autolisp. And once we pass the second point to the mView command, this command will end on its own and hopefully this line of code will run like it's supposed to. Let's see if that works. Let's load this into, a, into a, our active file. I'm just going to go to paper space here. Let's run VP. Okay, so it's, it's not making a, a crossing window like we want, but uh, let's, let's see if the code works otherwise. And sure enough, our layer went back to the one it was on before. So perfect. So what happens here when I'm typing MView now, I'm not running our custom command. So you have an option. You can, you can select any of one of these options, or I can just select the point. Then I have to select another point, and then it creates my viewport, of course. So what our code is doing is it's doing that for us. So it runs the mView command. It receives a point value. So it starts that crossing window. It receives a second point value. So it's satisfied and it ends the command on its own. Whereas before, before we had it like this, the command was just re remaining active and that was creating our unpredictable results. So what we've done is we've collected the data up here and then we've passed it to this command down here. So one thing you notice is it's just drawing a line from the lower left corner of the rectangle to the upper right or vice versa, depending which direction we go. These get functions, there's actually a lot of different ones. There's a get string function, a get distance function, I believe, and a get corner function. I might be wrong about that get distance function or no, no, there is. And you can check that, of course. Get dist is what it's called, because it, the text turns blue, of course, when you type in a valid function or a, or a defined symbol. But anyways, let's do get corner. Let's see if that works for us. I'm going to load that. Let's try out our command now. Perfect, it works. So this particular command, we're lucky because when we, if we initiate it, select the first point and hit escape, it stays on this layer. Some commands won't do that. More advanced Autolisp, you can do error trapping that would catch that and, and fix that problem. But in this, we're, uh, we're kind of fortunate in that our code, um, even if you hit escape when running the code, it doesn't do anything uh, too, too bad. But anyways, for my own purposes, I'm pretty satisfied with this code the way it is. I mentioned that I wanted to wrap up this tutorial series in this lesson, but I'm going to tack one more lesson on, onto the end of the series. We're just going to add one more, one more little thing to this code to make it better. So if you're interested in that, tune into the next lesson. If not, thanks for watching up to this point, and I hope, I hope this video series was helpful for you.